Hey everybody, just a very quick tutorial today. I just wanted to talk about the tab spacing in the text plus control. In reality, it's pretty straightforward. It's just about knowing how the tab stops work and how they're kind of set up and that type of stuff. So what I have right here in the note editor, I'm in Fusion right now, and I have, uh, I brought in a text plus title. And essentially that comes with my text plus note over here. And I've just written text in here, and then that pipes out to media out. Pretty straightforward. So right now I have no tabs or anything in my styled text entry here. So I'm going to come down to this tab spacing here. So the way the tab spacing works is there's this tab drop down here and I push that and I see up to eight different tab stops. So how this is going to work is each line within my text can have up to eight tabs and each of those tabs will refer to one of these tab stops here. And I'm going to show this in a minute. Um, I just wanted to point that out that it's we're working with tabs per line that'll correspond to this. So if I put a tab on this line, then a carriage return line feed onto another line and have a tab on the second line, each of those tabs are gonna to refer to tab one. Okay, so here we go. So I have, I have text written in there, I'm gonna press the tab, and then I'm gonna put more text after the tab. And things kind of look like, uh, like garbage right now. Everything kind of jumped over each other. So this is where it can get a little bit confusing because here you'd expect to actually see a, a tab and not things sort of smushed together. But really, we got to think in terms of tab stops. And that's what that's, this green line is here. So this here, if you notice this green line, as soon as I clicked that, as soon as I entered a tab and wrote some more text, this green line showed up here. And that's showing my tab stop number one. And if I look down here, I can take that position control here and I can grab this and I can scroll this around. And you'll notice that all the text after the tab, which is in this case, more text, is going to kind of move along as it snaps to that tab stop. So that's why things are kind of all jumbled up here is because the default position of this tab stop happens to be, if I click on this little circle here, 0.125 and if we're looking in the x direction this left side of the viewer here is minus 0.5 and this is positive 0.5 so this here can go from minus 0.5 you can go further you can go off the screen but um, minus 0.5 over here up to uh, 0.5 over here so I'm just gonna move this around so it just looks a little bit better here um, this alignment control here this works relative to this particular tab stop. So I'm, I, I'm set up with alignment zero right now. That means it's completely centered. If I drag this down to minus one, that's saying left line to this tab stop. And if I go to the other side to, uh, to, to plus one, I'm right aligned with this tab stop. So I, have, I can set any value in between. I also have up here, this little icon up here, you see it's kind of like a backwards L. So if I click this here, this little backwards L shows up, meaning it's right aligned. I click it again, it's left aligned, and, I, and then I click it again, and it, it looks like this little upside down T, meaning it's center aligned. And if you look at that icon, it actually kind of moves as I, as I change my alignment. So, so right now I'm going to left align to this tab stop here. There we go. And I'm going to take my text control and move it out over here. Now, you'll notice that as I drag my main text control around, just keep an eye on this value here. It's not going to change. So this value here is actually set up relative to how this is centered here. If I were to put my cursor after uh, between more and text, I'm going to put another tab in here. And you'll notice that opens up a second tab stop. And I can do the same thing, rinse and repeat, come over to the second tab stop. And I can position that however I want as well. Now I'm going to come down, I'm going to hit enter for a new line. Bring this down here. And I'm going to start off with, I'm going to type in text and I'm going to put in a tab and I'm going to type more again. So there we go. So now we're, remember this one here is our first tab stop. This one here is our second tab stop. So if I were to press this, the tab again, I'm going to snap over to here. There we go. And we're uh, middle or center aligned to that. And I can change the alignment. Now notice the alignment is affecting everything that's related to that particular tab stop. So this is what I said earlier when each separate line in your text 
kind of resets the, the tab stops. So if I just remove one of those tab stops there, I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. I'm gonna put another tab in here, I'm gonna push text. Okay, so now we have things repeated. So when I was saying earlier that these tab numbers here correspond to the number of tabs on a particular line, what I really meant to say was that tab number one applies to here. This is tab number two. This is not tab number three and number four. This is back to number one and back to number two. As far as keyframing, so I've created two keyframes, one on frame zero and one up uh, on frame, I don't know, 62 or something like that. And I'm just gonna grab the one up on frame 62 and I'm just gonna move that up to some arbitrary value. So now when I scroll along here, we can see that that second tab stop is being animated independent of the first one. And we can see that down here in the spline editor tree, tab two position. So you can animate each of these tab stops separately. So short and sweet today. Uh, thanks everyone for checking this out and I will talk to you soon.